Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, a Soviet man on Twitter, the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir, Lucas's Path. So, yeah, ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to do a little bit of editing on that video to get it approved, so let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm 10, you are up, and let's go. I'm sorry for all the mess. Lucas sounds embarrassed, and looking at his face, it's lit up redder than I've ever seen it. The only thing that stops me from worrying is that blissed-out look in his eyes. He looks very content. Following his gaze, I can see that calling it a mess is an understatement. While the cum only landed on our stomachs and chests, there's pre-lathering all the way down to our thighs, and it looks like it's soaked through the sheets. I know I should be shocked or maybe even grossed out, but I can't stop from thinking of how... Oh, excuse me, how hot it looks with this mess between the two of us. Our bodies still tangled together. It's okay, I had a good time. I'm glad. That, that was better than I expected. He nuzzles against me, and I reciprocate immediately. It takes more effort than I'm expecting. My body feels like it just ran a hundred miles. I don't want to pull away, and it doesn't look like Lucas has any plans of getting up to clean up as he slides up against me, causing the mess on our chest and stomach to smear around even more as he rests against me. I could care less about how much of a hassle this will be to deal with later. Right now, I just want to lie here for all eternity. But good things can't last forever, and he gives one final nuzzle before pulling away. I want to pull him back against me and tell, to, and just to tell the world to screw itself for today, but I can't bring myself to do it. We should get up. I have a test soon, and you probably have class. Actually, I don't have anything on Friday. Aren't you lucky? As much as I'd like for you to stay, I need to be free of distractions so I can study. Can we meet up at the library later? I'm about to give my answer when he walks next to my head in just his underwear, forcing me to focus on just how smooth the ceiling was. <laughs> Damn, how did it damn, how did they get it so smooth? Wallace? Uh huh? Can you meet me at the library later so we can meet Kostia? Oh, sure, sorry. The rustling sound of clothes finally stop and I take a peek in Lucas's direction. Thankfully, he's fully dressed in his usual attire. I remember what I was wearing last night and I feel some heat return to my face at the thought of walking back to my room in them. Except sitting on the edge of Ore's bed in my is my is my clothes, freshly washed and folded. He didn't mention he was going to clean them, but I didn't actually think he'd do it so early. Talk about organized. But I keep forgetting to do them. You should take a shower. You don't look very presentable. Following his gaze, I can see my fur around my crotch is still very much matted down after a little session. There's even some clumps up as high as my neck. Lucas isn't looking much better. In fact, he's actually looking even worse. There's even some aftermath of what happened on the side of his cheek. It looks like it looks licked up, but I can tell what the, I can tell what the disheveled fur is from. He doesn't look uncomfortable with how he is or how or how his sheets looks, but which is much better than me. I can already feel my body tingling with embarrassment. I can feel myself turning away to hide my mess. Hurry up! I want to take one too. I'm just as much of a mess as you are. I'll strip my sheets. Get in there. He doesn't look irritated or impatient, just confused at my gawking at him. He's so clueless sometimes, but I can't fault him for that. It's part of his appeal. Right. S sorry. He just gives a shake of his head and pulls away his blankets, peeling away his sheets and piling them up next to the bed. As much as his face looks stern and pouty, his tail is swaying away with away with more energy and excitement than I've ever seen before. I guess he really enjoyed our time, too. I'm taking off my clothes, getting ready for a quick shower when I notice a message from my, on my phone. I must have got it while I was sleeping. It's from Ari. I hope it's not anything bad. It's not a simple text message like I expected. Instead, it's just a single image file image file, a caption with a, cap with a caption underneath it. It's a photo of Lucas and me sleeping, cuddling together with his muzzle underneath my chin. It looks so serene that it actually chokes me up for a second. Underneath is a message from Ore, simply saying, You better make this your phone background, I'll check the next time I see you. Uh, Ore? You can't do that, surely. What if Lee or- Oh god, what if Oscar or Lily sees it? That'd be the end of me for sure. I can imagine Oscar poking us about sex constantly. But then again, is it really a- it is a really pretty picture, and I often see it every time I open my phone. With a dopey smile, I give into his request, and a couple of taps later, I'm greeted to the sight of the two of us in bed together behind the little square behind the little square icons. Normally, I'd be worried about Lucas getting upset about this, but I've come to con come to the conclusion that he doesn't really give a shit what people think. He just doesn't like the attention. One second, y'all. Water time. Ah. Gotta keep my boy's throat dry if you want to keep that voice high. 
I put my phone away with a large grin on my face. I'm really in trouble, aren't I? Oh, that's pretty. Despite being here for nearly a week, it still surprises me just how many people there are that are just hanging around campus. The food court is always packed with people, even in the mornings. Apparently, they have their own special breakfast menus here as well, and the on-campus cafe is very popular. I didn't even know we had an on-campus cafe. There isn't a specific reason I'm here. I don't have any classes today, and I don't have to meet up with Lucas for another three hours, but I didn't feel like locking myself into my room all day, so I thought I'd explore. I considered inviting everyone else along, but I feel like Lucas wouldn't be particularly happy with someone intruding on our little interview of Kostia. Someone who I still know little to nothing about. Lucas didn't really give me much of anything other than a guess that he's Russian due to his name. I'm surprised he's learning or was learning another language. I've never really given it much thought outside of my high school Spanish classes. I did alright on them, but I can't remember a single thing I learned other than a couple random words. I hope this Kosti is a good guy. He agreed to meet up with us, so he can't be all bad, right? God, I hope I'm right. Right now, I'm just wandering towards the I'm just wandering towards the fine arts department. The library isn't too far from it. Maybe I'll catch Ari. Plus, I want to check out that cafe people mentioned. That could be f uh, That thought drips out of my ear the dip drips out of my ear the moment I catch sight of said cafe. Amongst the bustle of people entering and leaving with their coffees, there's many chairs or t there's many chairs or tables both inside and outside. And sitting at an outdoor table a little ways away from the cafe entrance is Lee and Lily. A pair I didn't expect to see together. Lily and Oscar? Definitely. They're made to cause mayhem together, but Lily and Lucas? It seems uh, he, he seems to tolerate her company the most out of our group, excluding me, and she always seems eager to help. But Lee and Lily? That's not who I'd imagine working together too well. Then again, they're both similar in a lot of ways. Surely Lily's a bubbly sure, Lily's a bubbly ball of sunshine compared to Lee's rough gruff don't mess with me demeanor, but they're both really caring people who seem to dote on the people around them. They're like a mom and dad. Now that I think about it, it's surprising that I don't see them talk more. Plus, I can't imagine Lee preferring either of the two other two as better options. Actually, thinking about it from Lee's perspective, Lily is definitely the best option for him out of everyone. I do wish he'd give Oscar, Oscar more of a chance. I think they're a lot more similar than they think. But as it stands, Lily makes the most sense. They both got something sitting on the tables aside from their food and drinks. Two small bouquets of flowers. One is a beautiful batch of red roses, and the other is a familiar blue flower. Forget-me-nots. Curious, I approach the table. I'm not trying to be sneaky, but I don't think they see me coming. Or at least, I don't think Lily does. Lee's been eyeing me as soon as I enter the courtyard next to the cafe. I consider making my presence known with a greeting, but Lily is in the middle of what seems like a long-winded rant. Lee doesn't look like he's contributing at all. Rather, he's just listening to her and nodding along. Oh, one second. Now there's a hair. There is a hair on my keyboard. There we go. The hair is gone. Not wanting to interrupt, I just sit quietly in the seat next to her. I'd listen to what she's saying, but it sounds like complete nonsense without any context. Yeah, me and my dad are getting along a lot better now, but it caused a bit of friction. I think he still finds it awkward to talk to me, but it's not as bad as before, thank God. I'd hoped she'd noticed me as soon as I sat down, but she's so deep in her discussion, it's like she's completely blanked the rest of the world out. It doesn't last long too long for Lee to take pity on me and signals for her to look in my direction. She turns, and instead of the big surprise reaction, she just gives a massive grin on her face. Wallace, hey! Taking a break from classes and coming here? It's a real nice place. You should try the muffins. They're crazy like absolute bangers. Actually... Oh, oh wait! You have to try their mochas. They're so good! If you drink coffee, that is. I don't know if you drink coffee, but it's so good. You have to try. I don't drink... Oh, even if you didn't, they do these big milkshakes, and they're delicious. I had their chocolate mint one earlier, and it was insane. Best shake I've had my entire life. Uh... She's on her fifth cup of coffee. She wouldn't let me stop her. <sighs> my mouth drops, and I stare at the near full cup of coffee on the table. That's her fifth? That can't be good, right? There's no way. One second, y'all. Water time. No wonder the conversation is moving a thousand miles per hour. Oh, don't give me that look. It's fine. I just like coffee. That's all. This isn't even Star Paw... Star Paws? Really. Star Paws. Do they not have bucks in this world? It has to be... <laughs> well, I mean, they couldn't say Star Dollars. Star Dollars. <laughs> star Dollars. So we're going to call it Star Paws, Okay. This isn't even Star Paws coffee or something cheap. This is a proper ca ca this is proper cafe coffee. I can't imagine how expensive this must have been. 
Next to her coffee of what looks to be a slice of apple pie is the bundles of flowers I noticed earlier. Now that I'm closer, it seems like both of them have their own separate bouquets. What's with the flowers? We're visiting the cemetery. Uh, my mom passed away earlier this year, and after that nightmare reminded me of these. She wiggles her forget-me-nots gently, as to not damage any of the flowers. They look pristine and lustrous. I'm a little jealous. I'll ask her where she, sto she shopped for these later. I thought I should give her a visit. I didn't want to go alone, so I invited Lee along. Thought some quiet company would be nice. I've been meaning to visit my mother's grave, too. It's a good excuse. That's surprisingly somber for how energetic she's been acting today. Maybe this coffee consum consumption isn't usual for her. I think she's just trying to distract herself. It makes sense. Visiting graves is heavy. Do you want to? Do you want to come? There's always room for more, especially if you got someone to visit. No, I'm okay. I have to meet Lucas soon. I won't want to stand him up. I won't want to intrude. Not that I'm particularly keen on going there in the first place. It seems like something I shouldn't interfere with. A solemn meeting between between those who lost their mothers so early. Mine's still alive, and I just called her yesterday. I could see her tomorrow if I really wanted. They can't do that. The opportunity is gone forever. Hey, don't look like that. I didn't mean to bum you out. It's just something we're doing. Sure, it's not the most fun, but I'm looking forward to it. You are? Yeah, I haven't gone since we buried her, and it'll be nice to see her again. I bet you'll love hearing about my great new friends I just made, especially a cute little bean like you. Hey, we're the same age! She just giggles at that, and I can see Lee hiding a smile as well. Both of them are ganging up on, uh, are ganging up against me. This isn't fair! Does your mother have any favorite flowers? The question comes out of nowhere, but I can see her caressing her flowers, and Lee is looking down at his own bouquet. His is significantly smaller than Lily's, but they're just as vibrant. Um, she really likes poppies. What kind? All of them. She always wanted to make a garden with a bunch of different colors. Ooh, excuse me. Maybe you should surprise her with a bunch of different colored, colored ones for her birthday. I bet she'd love that. Yeah, she would. She reaches over and grabs my hand. It's, oh, God, I have the hiccups. It's comforting and makes me feel incredibly silly that they're the ones visiting the cemetery today, but she's trying to comfort me. But I can't deny that I enjoy it. If I can make a guess, I think she's taking comfort in it, too. Oh, this is adorable! Then a new voice comes in, and the mood shifts so drastically that I feel like I'm left reeling. It doesn't take me long to direct my attention to whoever's right next to our table. Oh, it's Are. Okay, it's Are. I'm shocked. I'm I'm shocked. I missed him coming up to us. He's not exactly subtle, especially with his outfit he's wearing. You can literally see his fucking thong. Jesus Christ! I expected him to be in his usual loose dance clothes. Instead, he's wearing a pair of black skinny jeans that only reach down to his knees and a stylish black unbuttoned shirt covering a truly eye-catching tee. The t-shirt underneath is a kaleidoscope of colors combined with abstract geometric shapes. Like every shirt he seems to have, it's a little too short and his pelvis peeks through the gap. Regardless of one's opinion on his outfits, he certainly has a distinct style. One second, y'all. Water time. Alright, hey, what are you doing here? The cultural center is just over there. He points over to the large building from yesterday, even though we just visited it. I'm not able to recognize it at all. It looks totally different during the day. It's not as tall as the science department's building, but it has a distinct design. It's like a single wall of spiraling up the building, wrapping around a glass building with how the windows are split up. It stands out compared to the more contemporary, sleek designs of the rest of the university, and that's without the large hall sitting right next to it. I was just going to get me a coffee between classes and saw two very familiar faces. Two? He nods over in the direction of the other two, and I'm reminded that I'm not here by myself. They've probably been waiting for me to introduce them. Oh, sorry, this is Ari. Uh, he's he's Lucas's roommate. I'm Lily. Lucas has mentioned so much about you. Has he? I can only imagine the awful things he says about me. He can be such a drama queen sometimes. Such a gossip. He's, he's, it certainly makes for interesting conversations. How ghastly! I'm expecting Lee to look confused or ask why they're referring what they're referring to, but it looks like he understands what they're talking about perfectly. I can't imagine Lucas would chat to Lee about his roommate. How would? My thoughts are interrupted by a whistle from the Pine Martin. He walks over past the past the lily toward past the past the lily the lily towards the possum at the end, who only glances up at him in exasperation. Wow! If you didn't have such a handsome face, I'd have barely recognized you, Ashley. You're going for punk bad boy look now? I will admit, it's hot. Hello, Ari. Aw, oh, Ashley, don't be like that. 
I thought we got along well. Lee lets out a sigh. It's a strange. It's strange. I half expected him to treat Ari like Oscar, but despite the monotone and stoic face, there's a shocking amount of red darkening his ears. He looks almost embarrassed. It's Lee now. For some reason, that knocks Ari off his game, and he looks genuinely shocked. Something about Lee changing his name really shook him up. He looks nearly speechless. Nearly. Oh, wow. I just wasn't expecting you to pick that. That's amazing, babe. I knew na a new name for a new you. How's Charlie these days? For the first time since he arrived, Lee actually meets Ari's eyes, and he looks genuinely surprised to hear his sister's name. She's great. I can't believe you remember her. Hard to forget. Some guy called us fags, and she kicked him in the dick despite being half his size. Feisty girl. I loved her. Yeah, that sounds like her. She's just starting middle school then. Always picking fights. She hasn't changed much, though. And something shocking happens. Lee smiles. It's not even like a little curl in the corner of his lips. It's a full-blown smile that causes his teeth to peek out. It's so unlike how Lee usually is. They both laugh, and there's a nostalgia, and there's a nostalgic atmosphere around our table. Despite not being involved in this discussion, I don't feel like I'm intruding or being left out. It's honestly just a blast to hear them talk. I totally forget that Aurea used to know Lee. He mentioned it. He mentioned it, but I wasn't even sure if it was if he was right. It sounded like it was just an assumption rather than rather than something concrete. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Till the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.